Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about a new feature introduced in C++11 called R value reference. R value reference is mainly used for two things. One is moving semantics and another one is perfect forwarding. Today we'll mainly talk about moving semantics. In order to understand R value reference, you must have a good understanding of R value and L value. If you don't, I highly recommend you to watch my another video called Understanding R value and L value. So what is R value reference? Say we have an integer A equal to 5 and A is a L value. And then we have a integer reference B which is initialized with A and B is a L value reference because it is a reference that is referencing to a L value which is A. Before C++11 we just call it reference and the R value reference is represented with two ampersand sign. So C is a R value reference. It is a reference that is referencing a R value. So how can this thing be used? Let's look at an example. We have two print int functions. The first one is taking a L value reference as a parameter and the second one is taking a R value reference as a parameter. And in the main function we call print int a. This will call the first function print int l value reference i because a is a l value. But if we call print int 6, this will call the second function print int with r value reference i because 6 is a r value. So with the r value reference we can overload a function based on the parameter type whether the parameter is a l value or r value. So this is the basic concept of r value reference. One thing to note is if we have a function void print int that takes a i as an integer then this code won't work because if you look at the first one print int a the compiler won't know which function to call whether this one or this one and when the compiler see the second function call it doesn't know which one to call either whether it's this one or this one so you can only overload the function with the R value reference and L value reference. Now the question is, what is the usefulness of this kind of function overloading? In our simple example, this kind of overloading is not very useful because the parameter i is a very small integer. But if the parameter is a resource managing object, then this kind of overloading becomes very useful. Let's look at a more realistic example. Here we have a class called bow vector, which is managing a big array of doubles. It has a copy constructor, which basically creates a new array and then copy each and every item from the right hand side bow vector to itself. So this is a very costly deep copy. It also has a destructor which basically deletes the array. The foo function is a function that takes a bow vector as a parameter and the create bow vector function creates a new bow vector. And in the main function first I create a new bow vector. It is called a reusable because it is intended to be reused. And then we use the function create bow vector. 
And then we call the function foo reusable. This will invoke the costly copy constructor to make an exact copy of the reusable and then pass it to the function foo. This is an expensive operation, but I'm okay with it because the reusable will be reused later on and I don't want function foo to mess up the content of the reusable. And then later on I call the foo function again but this time I'm calling with the bow vector that's created by the create bow vector function directly and again this one will call the costly copy constructor to create a new bow vector and pass it to foo. Will I be okay with it now? Definitely not because the create bow vector will return a R value which is a temporary that will be destroyed momentarily. So what's the point of making a copy of the temporary and pass to foo? Why don't we just use this already created object and then pass it to foo directly? And that is exactly what we are going to do. We'll have another constructor and this one is taking a R value reference as parameter. This is called move constructor. And the move constructor doesn't create a new array. Instead, it just take the right hand side's array and use it. However, we need to clear the right hand side's array to now. This is what we mean by move constructor. We are moving the right hand side bow vector's array into this bow vector. And it is very important to remember to set the right hand side bow vector's array to now. Because otherwise, when the right hand side bow vector is destroyed, its destructor will delete this array. And since we need to change the right hand side bow vector, we don't want the parameter to be a const. So the move constructor is making an inexpensive shallow copying and the copy constructor is making an expensive deep copying. And when the first foo function call see its parameter as a L value, it will call the expensive copy constructor and the second function call see its parameter as a R value and it will call the inexpensive move constructor. So this is the kind of flexibility and efficiency you can achieve with the move constructor. If we don't have R value reference and move constructor and we want to achieve this same kind of efficiency, we would have to have different version of the foo function we'll have one version that called foo by value and then we'll have a different version called foo by reference that's taking a bow vector reference as a parameter and in the first foo function we'll call foo by value and the second foo function we'll call foo by reference so you will have a lot of uh, function by value and function by reference in your code which will make it very messy. Now let's talk a little bit more about this example. Since we are already using C++11 and we have defined a move constructor for our object, so for this kind of function we shouldn't call it foo by value because when this function is taking a R value as a parameter, it will actually call the move constructor to move the object. So we'll just call it foo. And suppose the reusable will no longer be reused. So after this foo function, reusable is destroyed. And then even though reusable is a L value, we don't want to make a copy of it and pass it to foo. We want to reuse the object for the foo function. What can we do? 
we can call foo and then call the standard library function move. This will move the object of reusable to the foo function with the move constructor. But you need to be very careful that after you call the move function on the reusable, the reusable's member reusable.array is equal to now. So you really shouldn't be using the object of reusable again after calling the move function on it. And when the reusable is destroyed, it will call its destructor, which will delete the array. And in this case, it is just deleting a null pointer. There's one last thing I want to talk about this example. Suppose we have another function call foo by ref reusable. So now we have three function calls. This one will call the copy constructor. And this one will call the move constructor. And this function will call no constructor. It won't call any constructor at all. If you look at the efficiency of the three function calls, this one is the most efficient function call. And this one is almost as efficient as the first one. And the second function is the most expensive function call. A couple things to note. Note one, the most useful place for R value reference is to overload copy constructor and copy assignment operator to achieve move semantics. We already have seen the example of overloading a copy constructor with a move constructor. And similarly, we can overload the copy assignment operator with a move assignment operator. Note 2, move semantics has already been implemented for all the STL containers, which means two things. A, if you are using STL containers and you move to C++11, your code might get faster without changing a single line of code. This is because all the unnecessary copy construction of STL containers will be automatically replaced with move construction. And B, passing by value can always be used for STL containers. For example, we have a foo function which returns a vector by value. This is perfectly fine. And the who function pass over a parameter of string by value. And this is okay no matter how big the string is. The only place you want to use pass by reference is when you want the function to return a certain value through its parameter, like the case of the GU function. Summary. The main purpose of move constructor and move assignment operator is to conveniently avoid costly and unnecessary deep copying. They are particularly powerful where passing by value and passing by reference are both needed for your object. If you know that your object will always be passed by reference, then it is not necessary to create the move semantics for your object. Number two, they give you finer control of which part of your object to be moved. Basically, you can do anything you want in the move constructor and the move assignment operator. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have. See you next time.